on this computer. <laughs> Y'all set? Yep. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Michael Donovan. Welcome to our newest chapter of Casting Conversations, in which Richie Ferris and I get to talk to the uh, cast and creative team for whatever show we happen to be casting. And in this case, it is Slow Food, Wendy McLeod's play at ICT, which is the International City Theater in Long Beach, California. Woohoo! Okay. So uh, these lovely faces all around me, um, our fearless leader, Karen Desai, give a little wave, is the artistic director and our producer. Uh, Ma Maria Mazor is our director. Hello, Maria. Okay. And our cast includes Stu James. Woohoo! Hi. Meredith Thomas. Woohoo! and Perry Ojeda. Perry, you're still on mute, so make sure you unmute that. So we have a, a rather stunning looking cast, I must say, if I say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with um, ICT. Uh, so let's talk to Karen first. Karen, ICT, 36th season, that's pretty awesome. Yes, yes, and we've been blessed to have you for many of them, Michael. 22 you know? years, 22 years I've been casting for ICT, yeah. Yeah, I always say it's until you get it right. <laughs> so like, <laughs> But this show, you got it right. <laughs> no, we, we have an extraordinary cast on this show. So very, um, very fun show and really wonderful performances and really nice directing, Maria, and really had Thank fun you. watching yesterday. Um, again. <laughs> <laughs> so, Let's talk a little bit about ICT. ICT is International City Theater in Long Beach. Yes. Uh, six seasons. And you've been uh, artistic director for how many years now? 11. 11. You were general manager before that. Right. Cool. And uh, I always love to talk about how Karen is determined to keep theater alive. Determined, yes. okay? In spite of pandemics and everything else, it's going to still happen. And uh, uh, for those of you who don't know ICT, um, she chooses a wonderfully eclectic season every year. And uh, just everything from, oh my God, we have restoration comedy to contemporary musicals. It's like, what? You know, so it's, it's wildly inventive. And and once we actually get to go into the seats of ICT, it's a, such a beautiful, beautiful theater. So let's hope that happens soon. It's starting to look like it may be soon. So, but this is a virtual production, which was directed by the amazingly talented Maria Mazor. Let's talk about Maria's credits. The Geffen, South Coast Rep, Pasadena Playhouse, The Road, Chance Theater, Boston Court, and you are a returning alum to ICT. Yes. Yeah, it's really thrilling to be back at ICT. Um, I always love getting to see the productions there. I love working with all the collaborators on the team and getting to work with you again, Michael, and then this terrific cast. So it's been fun. We, we love to be in the room together. And when we can't be in the room together, at least to be in the virtual room together has been the next best thing. So was this your first time casting uh, via Zoom? Uh, it was not my first time casting via Zoom. I've done a couple of college productions in the fall um, that we did cast via Zoom. Uh, but it is a challenge, I think. Uh, you know, it's a different type of, of format. Uh, you have a different rhythm to the timing. Uh, but it, it works, you know. It's amazing what we were able to do in that process. And I'm grateful that it worked out so well and that we got such a terrific cast. Thanks to your organization, Michael and Richie, and and, and how uh, on top of it you were, this was the smoothest Zoom casting process that I've had so far. <laughs> That's good to hear. Yeah, uh, for those who don't know, this is it. This is how you audition now, these little boxes, which is kind of weird, you know? And, uh, and, and right now, these actors have never been in the same room together. <laughs> Crazy. We've never met, we, we've never met each other. Yeah, it's really. It sure feels and, like we <laughs> I know. <laughs> no physical uh, contact. And, and I just want to say up front, I, I saw the production and you guys did a marvelous job. And we'll talk more specifically about that. But let's meet our cast. So, uh, Stu, um, so Stu and I have had the pleasure of working together before. We cast him in the show called Recorded in Hollywood, in which he gobbled up all kinds of awards and did an amazing job, got amazing mm. reviews. And, and he was in that show with. Richie Ferris. Which is, Hi! That's Hi. Right. Rich. Pretty cool. I did a show. <laughs> yeah. So, Stu, why don't you tell us about you? Tell wow. Us. Um, okay. Um, about me. I am um, originally from um, the Southeast, um, high school and college. I went to Morehouse College um, in Atlanta with a finance major. Used to be a stockbroker. Um, it wasn't my passion. 
Um, so I chose to take that leap of faith. My bank was bought out by another bank. Universe pushes you out. Boom. What are you going to do? You're going to get another job at the bank or you're going to take that leap of faith. So I chose to take that leap of faith. And I've been working ever since then um, and happier as well. Um, I'm so grateful to be doing what I love to do. And it's so interesting, the character that I actually play. Peter is someone who was actually a, he's a turned business consultant via philosophy major via law school. So, but I feel like, you know, as I see the, um, the final cut version and you read through the script, I feel like he's still at heart. You know, he's still someone who philosopher, who is a philosopher primarily, but you know, he didn't feel as though he could make a living doing it. I get it. I came out of school thinking I couldn't make, didn't know I could make a living doing it, I, but I can being an artist. So um, I, I'm so glad that I chose to take that leap and do it. Um, I'm very grateful to be working, you know, with this cast. Maria is no joke. She's the task master. Master, get it. <laughs> do it again. Do it this way. Hello. But that's okay. I wouldn't have had it anyway. Very supporting professional cast. You know, we've not met each other, but so. uh, I still, there's still a connection that goes on. We, we, I think professionals and learning how to make it work and paying attention and learning to take adjustments and just make it, you know, just believing in a project um, makes us all, you know, brought us all together on the same page to make it work. But I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm an artist at heart who has some business training. So there you go. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. All right, Thank next you. up is Ms. Meredith Thomas. Now, Meredith, uh, Richie and I have cast Meredith. Richie, how many times have we cast Meredith? I don't even, I don't even <laughs> you know. You at least, yeah. It's, it's crazy how many times, but I first met Meredith when I directed her in a play called Red Tide, Green Tide uh, many moons ago, but fell in love with her then and it has continued over the years. So tell us about the lovely Meredith. Uh, well, uh, goodness, I always say that I, Michael's like the uh, one of the few casting directors in town that I, I can't lie about my age to because he's known me uh, that many years since West, since, since West Coast en Ensemble had its heyday in L.A. Um, so what about Meredith? So I've been um, I have an eclectic childhood that I love to throw in there. It makes me sound a little more exotic than I really am. But I am. Uh, I spent my first seven years in a village in Alaska where my parents taught Native Americans and um, Inuit and um, had an Inuit name and didn't know I was named Meredith till I moved to the lower 48. And then I lived on an island in New Hampshire and um, my first professional show. Uh, oh, we have this in common, Michael. You've probably forgotten this. My first professional show was at Keene Summer Theater at, I was I, in Annie. We discovered that years ago. So we have that in common. Um, and I went a year to the University of New Hampshire and couldn't get to California fast enough and have spent all of my adult years uh, in this amazing city. And um, I just, it's just been a joy and, uh, and a, a challenge. And uh, I, uh, 136 IMDb credits later, I'm still, um, I'm still here doing, doing what I love. Um, little girl who forgot to pack her socks and underwear when she moved to New Hampshire. And now I'm, you know, sitting here talking to you guys. So what a cool story. <laughs> really great. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Summer Theater. Yes. I was an actor for many years and I appeared at Keene Summer Theater in New Hampshire, which was a, a very nice summer stock company. Yeah. A long time ago. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next up <laughs> is the lovely, equally lovely uh, Perry Ojeda. Uh, so Perry is uh, uh, an <laughs> alum of ICT. This is your second show at ICT. So, uh, Perry started in uh, is he dead when we were actually doing things on stage? So, <laughs> so Perry, tell us. It was a minute you. ago. I realized that was longer ago than I thought. It feels like it was yesterday and it was not yesterday. <laughs> it was like eight, nine years ago or something. Yeah. Not long ago. Wow. It was, yeah. before, it was before I was working with Michael and I've been working with Michael for over nine years because I didn't know that Perry had done an ICT show. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was a minute ago. Yes, you were just a babe. Okay. So. <laughs> so tell us about Get Perry. younger, Michael. We just get younger. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> tell us about you, sir. Well, um, I grew up in Michigan. I'm the son of a migrant farm worker, Mexican, um, growing up in Michigan and moved to New York and lived there for 20 years and had a career in New York and in London a little bit. And then about 10 years ago, I moved to Los Angeles and have been here ever since. Let's not minimize those New York credits. How many Broadway shows? 
I did three shows on Broadway. I did two shows off Broadway. I did uh, three or four national tours, depending on how you count it. I, I was just in New York before lockdown. I did my solo show um, about Betty Comden and Adolph Green uh, when I worked with them uh, performing in On the Town. Uh, and that was just before lockdown at 54 Below. Wow. So you, when you see the show, you'll get to hear Stu and Perry sing a little teeny tiny bit. But just so that you know, Stu and Perry have extraordinary singing voices and uh, I've both done a fair amount of musicals. So. All right, cool. Great, guys. So, Karen, let's go to you. So, um, why slow food? Well, um, part of it is it was a comedy, and I need to, I always balance the season, you know, um, between the thought provoking material and then the, en the entertaining. And, and the thing about slow food that I really appreciate too is that it does have something to say. I mean, even through comedy, you can make a social comment about life, you know, and, um, and I, I like, I'm drawn to material that has something to say personally as a director, you know? So even when I'm making my choices, it, it, it means a lot to me that if it's, you know, um, you want people to come to the theater and you want them to have fun, but you also want to make them think and feel and open minds and open hearts, you know, because you can do a lot of so social justice work through, um, getting people to understand our shared humanity and how much we all are alike when we come together under one roof and hear stories that are just human, you know? And I think that's so important. And I think that's a, an important role that theater serves society. And I would hate to see something happen where theater is not thriving in our communities. You know, and that's why I'm so passionate about keeping something going, even if it's virtual, try, trying to, you know, entertain and educate. I, I love that you said that because one of the things that impressed me after watching the show, obviously I'd read it several times when we were casting it, but I wasn't aware just how strong the relationship story is uh, between the couple. Uh, I mean, this is a, a, but they're married 23 years. Is that right, guys? Do I have it right? And it's like, <laughs> watch uh, a story that kind of explores a successful marriage. It's so nice to see. That I really mean, surprised me too, Michael. That the, 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 that struck me the first time I read the script was that this is a comedy about a relationship that's working. I, I kind of can't believe that because yeah. I'd, never, I'd never come across it before. Yeah. Mario, you want to pipe in on that too? Because I'm sure that was a big factor for you. Yeah, that definitely, as someone who's been um, married more than 23 years, I won't say exactly <laughs> how many. Um, I, uh, yeah, I found that story, I think was the first thing that drew me to the play, the idea of this marriage and the moment in a marriage when um, the kids are gone and you're redefining what your relationship is and how marriages go through certain cycles and stages. Um, and then I got more interested also in the relationship of the waiter and how he's also in his own midlife moment. Um, and in a way, even though he's an extreme version of that and it's definitely comedic, um, they're all at a point in life where they, they see that there's sort of maybe a, a less of life ahead than behind. And they, you know, or, or life is changing and they need to redefine themselves. And I think you know, whether you're at midlife or another life stage, there's always that moment where you you step back and question life a little bit. Um, certainly the pandemic has done that for a lot of us. And so even though it is a very funny play, I do think it has a lot of layers to it. Um, and her writing is just so smart. And so um, the rhythms, the detail of it is amazing just in the way that it, the language itself is written. So I was very drawn to that about the play as well. Yeah, I, I, so I want to talk about the process too because I thought uh, I thought uh, Meredith and 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 Stu obviously with Mario's direction, you guys created a really viable, strong relationship when you guys had never even met. So uh, l let's talk about that. You want to uh, jump in? Sure. Well, Meredith, I think it's interesting. Oh, go, no, go, no, Meredith. Go ahead, Stu. Ladies, ladies first. Perfect. Go, go, ladies. <laughs> Meredith, go, please. Well. I, that's a, a lovely compliment. In addition to the fact that that um, we've never met each other, that our first experience was at the callback um, with each other. So, um, but, and then I add to that, giving away some of my secrets. I mean, I'm 
not married. I've not had a successful marriage and I don't have children. So, so what a, uh, so what a, a cool experience to, to put myself in that situation. So there's a whole lot of imagining going on, but I can tell you that I think, um, that we, I, I can, I think that Stu and I are very similar uh, people in that we, the we are pretty positive people, and um, so that we we kind of connected on right away. But this is where I think my film and television work uh, came in handy too. Is that is that real? Is really if you believe, they believe. Mm -hmm. And I had to really believe that I was there with this man and jet lagged and tired and how he is with my children, our children, and how he is when he hasn't had a beer and how I am. And I, and I had to, the intricacies of how couples are together, how comfortable that becomes. So, um, in, in, a, in a normal production, we, we would have been able to explore all of that. And by the time <laughs> we stepped on stage, we would, there'd, some of that would just be very real to mm -hmm. us. So, so all of, it, it, again, I go back to if, if I believe, they believe. This is, this is my husband. We've been through this journey together. We stepped off this plane this many hours ago and we haven't eaten for this many hours. Um, how are, how how is a real couple going to behave in this situ situation? And then, of course, you know, just having a wonderful director that's reminding, uh, reminding us of that every step of the way. We're hungry. You know, what time is it? You know, all of those things. So I think, um, so it's really, it's a, it's a high compliment to hear that, that you guys saw that, that, you, that, that it came through. Stu, how about for you? Yeah, well, Meredith, Thank you for <clears throat> saying that so nicely. And thank you for saying it. Meredith, Meredith is easy to connect with. She's an open book. She, she just, she's open. <laughs> you feel, I'm an energy person. I feel people's energy. I'm very <laughs> sensitive to it. I'm, I'm an empath. So yeah. it was very easy to connect with um, Meredith. And Meredith likes to play. So it was easy to go in and play and, um, and, and create those moments with her. I agree with you as far as um, having to believe it ourselves, you know, feel the, feel the um, energy, feel the connection through via Zoom, you know, and through me trying to connect with her, looking at, um, trying to keep eye lines, as well as looking at Meredith at certain times so that I could see, you know, feel what she was feeling. So it, that was the hard part, not being there. But when you work with someone who's a professional and who shows up willing to play and who's open, it just makes the process easier to create that reality. So that's what it was. It was for me, without a doubt. And Perry, you're sort of the uh, uh, MC ringleader, uh, <laughs> um, arbitrator, a number of things. How was that for you? I I really liked Stephen from the first moment I read the sides. There was something about Wendy's language uh, that I just found deeply human, as well as extremely funny, mm -hmm. and. There was something about uh, Mars' approach that I just felt synchronized with. There was something, I felt it immediately in the audition and I felt it immediately on the first day of rehearsal that, that confirmed it for me, that we were looking at this, the world of this play through a similar prism. And I just felt a lot of identification with it and a lot of, um, I mean, there's, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of technical, brilliance to be mined in this comedy there's a lot of a lot of hard turns a lot of list builds lots of lots of uh build up and payoffs in in the joke writing and there's there's lots not to be missed um but the humanity of the characters seemed present from the from the first moment i read the page i was like i i know exactly who this guy is and once i feel that once i feel like i know who he is it's easy to breathe that recognizable human behavior soul into it. This sounds very actorly, but I just, I just liked him. I liked the guy <laughs> and that's, that's why I wanted to play him. Well, to you and of course the director's credit, I thought, you know, that character could easily be sort of, um, you know, just a joke, 
uh, just funny. And I thought you brought real humanity to him. Uh, so that's a real tribute to you. Um, can we talk about uh, the process? Karen Desai directed the last uh, show uh, virtually at ICT, and now it's Mario's turn to do so. So what was it like just working this crazy process? Why don't you, maybe Mario, you want to jump in first? And I don't know. Sure. I mean, I think in some ways in the beginning, it felt similar to what we would do in a rehearsal hall because we were doing table work. Um, you know, studying the script and becoming familiar with it. Um, so in that part of the process, it felt very similar. And then I think it's when you make that leap where you would be getting on your feet um, or you would be doing blocking. Even this play mostly takes place in a fairly limited space, which is helpful. It's a, uh, a table, um, but still you, you realize, oh, we can't, we can't do that in exactly the same way. Um, and it becomes a little bit more like a film process because you're dealing with some of the technical aspects of eyeline, trying to match shots, trying to match, you know, the prop, you know, if I take it off stage on this part of the screen, you know, that has to come back on in the right part of the screen and with everybody in different spaces, um, those things get really complicated, particularly because we did have our actors filming themselves um, with their own cameras and we we weren't always able to even see the shot that was being filmed while it was being filmed. So depending on the setup of their space, I sometimes didn't know if the shot was exactly, you know, exactly what the shot was. Um, so there was a leap of faith going on there. And I'm very grateful to Mike, our editor, and to Patty Bryles, our prop master, um, Kim DeShazo, who did the costumes, Mike um, Braddock. Am I saying his name correctly, Karen? Maybe you can let me know. I made a, um, and I, I, I'm grateful to them because they really brought all of the elements together as well as this terrific cast. But we should introduce you to our costumes and makeup and hair people, which are the cast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> me and the crew. <laughs> the cast and crew. Part of the crew, without a doubt. Yeah. We were the crew. We so, uh, yeah. so for the three of you, is this the first time you're doing, uh, I mean, it's kind of a hybrid, isn't it? Like Meredith kind of touched on that. It's a little bit film, it's a little TV, it's a little theater, it's sort of a little of everything, right? But is this the first time you guys have done a play uh, in this format? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, Michael, I said, I, I, I've told the cast this, I saw the breakdown. I saw it was ICT. Um, I saw it was you and Richie and I just like, well, that looks really interesting. And I just went, but I cannot do that. <laughs> that like, that seems so interesting, not going to happen. Um, and then Michael calls me in through my agent. So I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do an audition. I'll try not to suck. Okay, it's Michael and Richie. So, you know, but um, uh, some of the, um, you know, some of the stuff that you see of Irene's frustration and tiredness Oh, honey, I didn't have to act that because we were, we're calm and cheery today, but I don't think I'm out of line when I speak for my castmates and say, this was one of the most challenging experiences that I've ever had as an actor, um, wearing so many hats. So hats off to everybody that normally wears one of these hats because, um, it was like, I look at the end of the play and it's like, it's like, it's the end of the play for me, like, because it's the third day and I'm tired and my eyes are glassy <laughs> and I look like I need a glass of wine and, and a beer and a Spanagopita, you know, like all of that. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this, even, even with a year of self taping, this, the, the challenge of this was, was greater, much greater. Yeah. Stu? Yes, this was challenging. This was hard. I'm telling you for me, that's what it felt like because I'm just not used to, I mean, I, it makes you appreciate the crew. I've always been thankful and grateful for what they do. And I know it's amazing, but they're, they specialize in it. You know, I've touched on it, but here we were part of the crew, wardrobe, makeup, 
you know, um, hair, props, um, videography, you name it. And um, I just didn't kind of know to expect that. But mm -hmm. hey, I just was willing to roll with it because we had no choice. And my, be my belief is once you start something, you got to finish it and just always give it your best. Mm -hmm. So, but I felt a little overwhelmed at times. You know, the last day was really hard. Um, you know, brain was just tired and, and trying to get these lines down. I mean, a little intimidating, 70, 70 some pages of book in, in, in 10 days. And then we shoot the next three days. I'm like, how in the world are we going to do this shit? It was what my mind was. Yeah. But Mario was encouraging the cast to show up. Everybody would, um, would be willing to give it their all. So that you guys encourage me. I'm like, we have got to make this work. I'm like, because as far as I'm concerned, the final product, our names or our faces are in it. It's a wonderful piece. Like, like Perry said, it's written well, it makes you laugh and people need to laugh right now. Oh, yeah. So was not able to laugh as much during the process, but <laughs> you can laugh now. So I'm grateful. It felt like it felt like sitcom 102 boot camp. That's what it felt like. And we should tell everybody, start to finish is 10 days, right? 10 days? Isn't that what you guys did it, Maria? Four, yeah, yeah, like four, yeah, we did eight, eight, days, eight, eight days of of, re of rehearsal and then three days of filming. So 11 total days. 11 total days, start to yeah. finish. And, and, and the cast did so much, as they're saying. I mean, it was amazing, their contributions. And I think it's all in the interest of supporting theater, trying to keep theater going in challenging times. Because um, we all know that ultimately we want to be together um and and be in 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 the space together um so it was just really great that everyone rose to the occasion and, and Mario, you, you were yeah. soft on them you gave them 11 days my show they had nine days <laughs> <laughs> oh the gauntlet has thrown down okay uh, dear. <laughs> we were in between i was getting covid shots and you know <laughs> like the, um, i forgot you were getting but, vaccinated while this was all happening Yes, yeah, exactly. Like I was, uh, but, um, and, and I know I want to hear Perry's, but I just, I want to say again that, um, you know, Maria being so supportive, so calm. I know she was freaking out as much as we were. I know she was, but she was holding it in because she knew if she let us see, then, mm -hmm. then we might, we might lose it. Oh. So being able to stay, you know, steer that ship when when the three of us were like we're not sure if this is yeah. gonna work i'm totally steer, joining stay, there stay yeah. calm stay stay she stayed calm she stayed with us she stayed encouraging yes um none of her new york what are you doing <laughs> came out i'm sure it wanted to many mm -hmm. times but you i mean you were such a trooper maria to um to just to to know that to trust that if if you stayed calm that to trust that we could do it even when we kind of didn't know that we could maria you are amazing Seriously, <laughs> you really are so I'm, i had an amazing cast i had an amazing <laughs> cast i'm very grateful um that everyone was was game to try everything they all were were just willing to play as you said Stu. um uh, willing to to play and try things and try different choices and and figure things out there were definitely learning curves for all of us in this process because it's such a new process right and it, as michael said it's not film it's not theater it's this in between digital medium which um i know has existed pre-pandemic but uh it's certainly a new process to me um just in this past year and and so we're all kind of learning Figuring out as know, we how it works. Yeah. What about you, Perry? Well, I join everyone in in the experience <laughs> of this being ridiculously challenging. I think because of just the unknown. Like at every every step along the way, it was someplace I had never been before. So there was that level of inertia of like, okay, what is this? But that said. I did feel a great deal of support. I mean, I loved that Patty from Props showed up almost every day with a new set of, well, the, here's the notes from yesterday, so here's the new stuff we have now. And 
the selection of costumes that came and the, the notes I got from Mike, our editor, were so helpful about how to set up the shot. And we can't use this green screen. We got to use that green screen. And we need this microphone, not that microphone. And, and I think we all, all of us learned a lot of weapons that are going to help us along the way, because personally, and I, I defer to you guys, uh, you and Richie about this, I don't think a big chunk of this digital world is gonna really go away pretty much at all. I think it's part of the vocabulary now. I think this is gonna inform casting and how we collaborate. I'm, I'm just getting ready to go to another job uh, under a lore contract, a uh, regional theater contract. And we're going, to, we're going to meet via Zoom because the company is not completely vaccinated for the first several days. So I'm gonna to go to the site of the theater where the company is gonna be vaccinated and we're still gonna have our table reads and much of the rehearsals through Zoom for several days out of safety. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's gonna be a switch. I think this is the new reality and it's in our best interest as artists to accept this as an obstacle that allows us to find more creative ways to express ourselves rather than something we can't wait to get rid of. I think you're right, Richie. I think you would agree. This is here to stay. Uh, this is how casting is going to work um, because it, what it does in, in many ways, it allows, um, well, first of all, you work at home. <laughs> you know, when you're watching this, director, producer, writers, the whole creative team gets to watch at home. And in some ways we can see more people because when we're doing it in a live audition, we have a limited amount of time at a studio, mm -hmm. whatever we may be, and we had to squeeze in a certain number of people. But this, Richie, we we have seen. It's, yeah, I've one of the hardest things that I struggle with as, as a casting director is like, I'm so excited about all of these people, whether I know them or whether they're new to me and just seem really great for this, but I can only schedule, you know, X amount in an hour and we only have X amount of hours in a day. And so this it really allows us to cast a wider net, which is really cool for me because I, I want to be able to give people as much an opportunity as possible. And something that I want to elaborate on with a question in a little bit is, um, but I'll just say that through our several processes of, of Zoom casting, self-tape, Zoom callbacks, you know, it's, it's a little different each project. But one of my favorite things is just seeing how adaptable every single actor has been. It blows me away. After every session, after every round of tapes, how amazing these tapes are, after every round of callbacks, where I'm like, they all rolled with the punches so beautifully and they showed up and they they knew what to do. And they're like, this is kind of weird. Maybe I'm intimidated, but like I'm following your lead and having a great time with it. And and I've just been so impressed. And it's, it's really exciting because yeah, we don't know, we're all, taking this a day at a time, a step at a time, each project will present new opportunities, new challenges. And so, you know, we don't know what the future is going to look like. So it's just been really special to see how everyone's been truly on this journey together. Karen, you want to jump in? Yeah, something you said, Richie, that really resonated with me is like their ability to um, adapt and change and take it on and, you know, and roll with it. And and I just go back to, cause I'm, and I know you are too, Michael, passionate about education. That's yeah. why like our, ch our children's programs and the things that we're teaching them about creative thinking and stuff to me is so vitally important. It's just, just those skills that they will learn to help them cope with the world. Not that they all are going to be actors or want to be, or their parents would kill me. Um, but but <laughs> just, just the skills they learn in how to cope with the world and, and, and creatively how to keep adjusting and, and, um, getting through. And I think artists know how to do that. We also, uh, Richie kind of touched on too, we give, this way we give an opportunity to so many more actors, which we love doing. Uh, Richie and I are both passionate about seeing new people all the time, as well as the, you know, uh, established people that we know who we also love, but we want to give everybody a chance. And and the response to this particular show was huge. Uh, we, I, I, I mean, well over a thousand submissions and, uh, uh, and like, you know, really great people. The, the one weird thing about the pandemic is that some people who, you know, normally are not available were available. So uh, you guys beat out some really great people. So okay. just know that. <laughs> available, eager, hungry, de desperate to just get to do something creative and artistic. So yeah. To work, to, to yeah. You know, do what we love to do, you know, and that's what I'm so grateful to Karen for that you know, continuing to give opportunities to to me and to 
uh, my fellow people from the theater community who we love. So, um, so Karen, tell us specifics about um, dates and what it costs and all that stuff. Okay, um, I, Perry's really good at this. I've Perry? I've seen him <laughs> on a couple things, you know, and and I will tell you, it's thirty dollars per household. And I'm going to let Perry tell you the rest because he's really good at it. <laughs> you get your ticket by logging on to www.ictlongbeach.org. That's ictlongbeach.org. Um, it is $30 per household with a $3 uh, service fee. Um, the tickets are only available Thursday through Sunday. So uh, we're just outside the window this week. You can log on again before, um, but you'll get a link and that will get you access to the show uh, anytime Thursday through Sunday this week. Um, and we end um, May- May 16th. May 16th, there yeah. we go. Streaming on demand, yeah. Streaming on demand. <laughs> Thursday through Sunday, Sunday. Uh, running uh, uh, on those weekends. So we have two more weekends to go. Uh, so really get a chance to see you folks and get to see this, uh, the wonderful work done by all of these people that are surrounding me here. Mm. So, uh, I, did, I did have one more question I wanted to ask them, um, before we, we wrap up. Um, and this just goes back to, to process a little bit, but this is the, the beginning process, um, where, where, where Michael and I are, are, are present. Cause I, I'm very curious about your experience with this, specifically the callbacks this was our first Zoom callback session that involved mixing and matching, chemistry reads, you know, working together. And normally, you know, this is something that we were used to doing, it, it, it comes standard and, you know, you're at a callback and you're, you're paired off and you go and work together. But in this case, all that we're like, I'm frantically chatting with everyone in the waiting room. I don't know if everyone's like reading all the updates, but I'm like, you two are going to be next. And you, in this case, you know, maybe different casting offices handle this differently. But in this case, you're not getting a chance to work together. So you open the Zoom window and you find out who you're reading with and you go. And I just kind of want to hear about what that crazy experience was on your end. Because I know what it felt like on my end and it was stressful in a different way, but also <laughs> it was stressful. And <laughs> so, so tell me about that. This is where I and I and I, I I just know less about Stuart's experience, so I can't speak to that. But I uh, I do know that Meredith and I have a similar background in doing a lot of her way more than me, but doing a lot of Lifetime uh, and Hallmark films, and those have not stopped production in uh, pandemic times. Those have kept right on going. Pretty much as soon as we could start production, they went back uh, to work, and a lot of that has happened with these kinds of chemistry reads. So I was familiar with exactly the process that you describe. But one of the things that the advantage that I think I felt from having an experience of doing those types of films is that I never know who I'm gonna be matched with when I show up to set and I'm expected to know my stuff cold and ready to go. And with that in mind, with that skill set, I think I was prepared slightly more to be able to say yes to whatever I got in the callback and get, get the best result I could given the circumstances. And I think, I think that's an example of where it was just dumb luck. I'd, I'd had that experience on set, particularly in those Lifetime movies where they're done with a dime and sometimes not, sometimes, you know, you, but you just, you're, it's like a soap opera. You just gotta know, you, you gotta be ready to go and know the material backwards to be able to be, to allow yourself to be thrown and say yes with whatever you're getting. So there's an advantage, there's, there's just an advantage that I, that my experience, I think gave me in that kind of, in that kind of situation. Um, but it, Personally, I, I really liked the challenge. It was a lot of fun. It's a little bit like playing audition roulette in that <laughs> you just kind of, okay, what's gonna happen now? Uh, what's gonna, like what, Meredith, what, how, did you, how did it go for you? Do, do you? do you join me in that kind of? Yeah, I think that, that that was actually a really interesting way to put it, but that's true. You know, you walk on set one day and there's your husband. 
and you have to create something like you have to create something in that moment and maybe you get a rehearsal you know to but that's the guy you know that you, so uh for me it was a little bit different in that i had auditioned with uh, a dear friend originally who plays my husband often so um we had already kind of run 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 it and and um and so I had to be really, um, I was just really open and available to listening and, and connecting with um, Stu, because Stu's the only other person I read with in the callback. Mm -hmm. so, um, I, so this guy pops on the screen and I just had to you know listen and to see and hear what he was about in that moment. Well, he's not and too heavy I mean, to look at either. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you, you, I, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I didn't have to. You know, I, I was I was pleasantly surprised. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there might have been an ex boyfriend or two I was looking at in the feed, going, "Oh, I'm gonna read with him." No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> so um, I was that. like, "Oh, oh, <laughs> what?" I, you say? I worried about that. You don't know. You. Yeah. We, oh, you were not specifically for me, though. No. I mean, I don't get around that much. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so it was fun. It was, it was fun. It was like, there's my husband. There we are talking about this. And, and that was, and, and it's where all those things that actors say repeatedly come in. Listen, respond. Get get your get get your husband to feel something in this moment, even if you're having to send it through a screen. So it was it was fun. It was fun. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it. I mean, I'm with you guys. I mean, the TV stuff that I've done, I agree. We show up ready, like you said, knowing the script, nonstop, ready to play. Um, this was good, Meredith. I've read with a few other ladies before you. And none of them had, none of them had an energy like yours. You were the last one that I read with. And I'm telling you, everybody else was a little bit more, oh, I don't know if it was settled or a little bit more settled <laughs> and a different energy, but you were like- It's that not hard to just, be more settled than I am. You were that wife, just, <laughs> you were like, bam, into it. And you're right, the key to cold reading is listening. Listening, not what we just, I ran with, not the line or the way that it was done with a friend prior, but it's listening to you and feeling and connecting with your energy. And what I'm saying is you are someone who comes in willing to play. So I just, I actually adjusted to your energy because mm -hmm. it was totally different from the other three young lady, ladies that I read with. Mm -hmm. And it was fun. It was a total shift. So you wore a breath of fresh air. So it was cool for me. Yeah, I, I like cold reads. They're wonderful because we have to listen and react. Yeah. And for the Acting actors who are watching, we should say it's, it's we get lucky once in a while when uh, in a chemistry read, we get the two people who end up in the roles. That isn't always the case, but uh, yes, when they read together, yeah. And, and you just fed off each other beautifully and it was a nice combination of people. And then, you know, with crazy Perry Ojeda popping in and out, you know, <laughs> it just kind of worked. So grateful for everybody. I think that's a great example of what Karen was talking about in terms of education programs, how just the simple act of learning how to listen and respond, such a basic aspect of our human humanity um, that, you know, acting teaches to young people. Um, so I love that, Karen, you're bringing that forward through the ICT education programs as well. I always tell my students, if you're in trouble, just listen. Just listen. Zero I would give you that yes. too when teaching, yes. Yeah. It's, you know, especially when you get, you know, actors of this talent, they're going to just bring you right in and you're going to be fine. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for spending time with us. We really thank appreciate you. it. So Lots great. Of love to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you so much. Helps, everybody. Thank you. It was really fun. And go see the show, everybody. It's so fun. You'll really, really fun have fun. Good laugh that we need right now. So good. ICT. What's the website again, uh, Perry? Perry. <laughs> That's ictlongbeach.org. Yay. Thank you all. Uh, thank you. Wonderful thank you. people. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you, guys. Bye. All right. Bye. <laughs>